good. There we go. Welcome to True Hebrews United of the Lord. Yeah, she was. She blew up holding this fresh top two. Joe Sergeant I'm about to get into the book as usual. Definitely give all honor to our high who we got Yeshua, the only begotten of the Father, all the brothers and sisters across the world, especially here in Belize, at the outposts of whatnot, 7-8-25 XLY. But um, definitely thank to all the brothers and sisters across the world, all the ministers pressing and holding the standard. Definitely thank those, all those people that share, like, and uh, comment on the videos and uh, keep pressing. I appreciate you guys and going from there. So I definitely thank that. And um, thank to be here, be outside of Babylon, outside of the states with the saints here. So when well, Sister Whitney come up. What else you want to say? I am talking about No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad to have the Discipleship Joe Sergeant here with us in Belize. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, no, it's, it's a blessing to be here in Belize. So, that's it. Amen. Appreciate you. Sister Braders. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What else you want to say? She likes it. She's camera shot. A nice shirt. Go. <laughs> go ahead, little ones. Come on, good. Appreciate you pressing. Pressing. What you want to say to people trying to be saved? Um, that I'm happy that I that my dad's here and that we'll be teaching people the word of Yah and that soon everybody, some people will go to heaven and that they'll be saved. In the kingdom, that's right. What you want to say? <laughs> what you want to say? You got something? We're going to put it that way. Thank the Almighty. Thank the Almighty for treats. Mm -hmm. That's good. I look for mom and dad. And juice. Oh, no, I don't want that. All right, cool. All right, go ahead. All right, with all that, you guys ready? Yes, sir. In that order, there we go. Cool. That's cool. So, with all that said, be it done. Let's let the fingers do the walking and. Let's try it again. The kids did a better job than the adults. Let's let the fingers do the walking and. That's right. Ephesians chapter 4. Ready for war. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's get it. Going to start at verse 10. I dealt with this a little bit, but I'm going to go in more detail. I'm going to go in more detail today. So, um, Ephesians chapter 10, uh, chapter 4, verse 10. It says, He that descended the same as also that ascended up far above heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Why did he give them these things? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, I'll keep reading. Uh, Till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. That means they're here to perfect you. Perfect man unto the measure and of the statue of the fullness of Amashiach. So without a ministry, you can't come in the fullness of Amashiach of Christ. That we henceforth be no toss, um, uh, be no more children tossed and fro with every carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in white to deceive. It, it, exactly my point. You should be looking for a minister that's called from the Almighty. You have people out here with this gospel saying you don't have to be baptized. People out here with this gospel saying it's okay to have crosses and doves, saying it's okay to observe certain uh, pagan holidays and whatnot, because they're not called from the Almighty. The only way you know who a minister is, is you got to be reading your Bible on your own, too, and make sure he's using it uh, rightly divided. And the only way you do that is if you study. So, when the Almighty raises up a minister that is called, and you know he's a man of the Almighty, you need to run to it. You can't be picky and be choosy, but I'm going to show you something. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. You guys are doing good. Good job. Isaiah 
Isaiah 53. We'll do a verse 1. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Say amen when you got it. Isaiah 53, verse 1. There we go. <laughs> it said, Who have believed our report, and to whom have the arm of the Lord be revealed? So this is a prophet Isaiah, and he goes out and preaches the gospel. You have to be quiet. He goes out and preaches the gospel, and he comes to Almighty and says, Almighty, who have believed our report? And to whom have the arm of the Lord be revealed? And because the Almighty sets up these ministers, and he dispersed them across the whole earth, the whole planet. And people say they want to be saved and they want to come and be a part of a congregation. They want to be a part of the body of Hamashiach. But then when he sends them to someone and the Almighty answers their prayer, he sends them someone, then they don't want to receive it. They don't want to obey it. You know, I, I deal with people. They say, oh, you know, I want to uh, get out of persecution or I want to be saved. I want to do the right thing. You tell them the right thing to do. They don't receive it. They don't receive it. So how can you be praying to the Almighty you want to be saved? He sends you a minister so you can be saved. So then what thus said the Lord and the minister speaks on the Almighty's behalf, then you say, I ain't going to obey that. I can't do that. Let's see what happens when you do that. Ezekiel 33. No matter of fact, let's go to John 12 first. Because I'll show you the, uh, Isaiah 53, what Isaiah 53 in one minute. So John chapter 12. Just a little more. Amen. I'll try to get some pictures so we can put it on Facebook tomorrow. Dad. Shh. We're studying. John chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 35. John chapter 12, verse 35. And let's get it. So it says, Then Yeshua said unto them, No, wait up, John chapter 12, verse 35. Okay. Then said unto him, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light. That's what you're supposed to do. Lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not where he goeth. While he was yet have while ye yet have light, believe in the light, that you might believe in the children of the light. These things spake Yeshua and departed and did hide himself from them. Check this out. But though he had done many miracles before them, yet they believed not the saying, uh, not on him. Why not? That the saying of Isaiah might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who have believed our report, and to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe because Isaiah, uh, because that Isaiah said, said again, it says, he had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with the eyes nor understand with the heart and be converted and I should heal them. So we have two situations right here. One that Isaiah says he preached the gospel and said, Almighty, who believes your report? I go out and preach this gospel and these people aren't receiving. It. And then now when Christ come, the prophecy come to pass, Christ come and he says, though he did many miracles, they still didn't believe. And you can find yourself in that position because you're praying for a minister. You want to be saved so the Almighty will send an ambassador your way to teach you the way of salvation. And then you don't believe him. You don't follow him. You don't adhere to what he's saying for you to do. When he's a war the Almighty placed him to be a watchman for your soul and to keep you in the way of salvation. So Christ came, the Messiah himself came and did many miracles and says they didn't believe that the saying of Isaiah may be fulfilled. Now the second situation is, if the Almighty has sent you a minister, and you say, oh, well, if, uh, even though he's a man of God, I know he's preaching truth, that's just not the congregation for me. If you, uh, if you believe that that person is a man of the Almighty, and you believe that person is pre pre preaching truth, then that's where you need to plant yourself. If that's the only man you know preaching truth, and the only and, and, and you know he's a call of the Almighty to preach the gospel, and you don't have no other people, no other options, then that's a there's a hundred percent probability that's where you need to plant yourself. It doesn't matter if he lives in a different state. It doesn't matter if you could get to that uh, that minister that he said before you. That's the minister that you need to go to. I don't care. You got to call. You got to catch. Hey, hey, uh, when's your next feast day? I want to be there for the feast days. Whatever you got to do to make it and be a part of that body, because that's who the Almighty sent. You pray for a minister, he sent to minister your way. And that's the, that's the problem we have, because if you choose not to, then maybe salvation isn't called for you. 
If a minister came your way and you chew, oh, well, you know what? I just, I just don't want to. This just takes too much. I want one where I could just walk five minute walk and have a congregation. It's not going to happen. Because it says in the latter days, there's going to be few people standing on the wall preaching the gospel. We'll read this scripture later on. Many will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So my, the question is for you, when truth comes to you and you can't receive it, then maybe the Almighty blinded your eyes. Maybe the Almighty blinded your eyes. Because truth came, a man spoke to you the truth and blinded your eyes. So I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Judas, Judges chapter 33. Matter of fact, go to Ezekiel 33 first, and then we're going to go to Judges. Ezekiel 33. Start at verse 30. Pay attention to this scripture. It's even verse 33, chapter 33, verse 30. It says, Also, you okay, you got it? Yeah. It says, Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still talking against thee by the walls and at the doors of the house. What? So the, there's people talking against the man of God. He's a prophet of the Almighty. They're speaking against the prophet. Let's see how they're speaking against them. And against the doors of the house. Speak and, and speak to one another. Every man to his brother. This is what they're, they're speaking against them, saying, Come, I pray you to hear what the word that cometh from the, uh, from the Lord. So they're saying, hey, let's go to service. Let's go to True Hebrews United. Hey, you should watch True Hebrews United. You should, hey, they got a Facebook, they got a YouTube. Hey, that's a man speaking truth. He's a teacher. Simon, have you heard of him? Hey, you need to come. This is how they're speaking against him, right? And they come unto thee as a people cometh. And I get people that come. Oh, you know, I watch a couple of your videos. They call. We do Bible studies. They come. Let's keep going. And they sit before thee as a people to hear thy words. Check this out. And they sit before. And I have people come drive down two hours up. And they sit to hear the words. Oh, I believe the Spirit is in you. I believe you're a man of the Almighty. Check this out. And it says, and they sit before thee as a people, and, and they hear their words, but they will not do them. That's how you speak against the man of the Almighty. It says, come, then you should come. True Hebrews United, hey, this is a man, uh, teacher Simon, and you come and you sit, but you won't do them. I tell a brother, hey, don't mar the corners of your beard. The Bible says, don't mar the corners of your hair, don't mar the corners of your beard. So all you people out there talking about you need to let your beards grow, and you have edge ups, that's more in the corners of your beard. You have edge ups, that's more in the corners of your head. So they say, oh, where's your beard at? Where's your beard at? But you have an edge up. You're more in the corners of your head. You're more in the corners of your beard. There's scripture where they cut all. Look at the priests. Before they entered the priesthood, they had to cut all their hair off. Off their eyebrow, their whole beard, their whole head, all their arms, all their hair off. Every single part of their body. But it says, don't mar the corners. So you people get an edge up or wrong. I told this brother, I said, hey, don't get an edge up. He come with an edge up. But same, same brother, oh, let's come to service, man, I want to come to service, I want to be around the Bible. They're speaking against the man of the Almighty. Look, let's read this again. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and the doors of the house, speaking to one another, everyone in his house, saying, come, I pray thee, hear what uh, the word that cometh from the Lord. Oh, hey, teacher, Simon be speaking out of the book, man, he speaks truth. And they come unto thee as the people come in, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew love. And praise the man, I appreciate you, Simon A. Man, I appreciate all the work you're doing. They shew much love. This is this to the people that they testify. This is a man of the Almighty. Hey, that preacher's a man of the Almighty. That's a teacher. That's an evangelist. That's an apostle. Hey, let's come. You got to come to that service. Check this out. They show much love, but their heart goeth after their own covenants. Their heart go after their covenants, and lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song, as one that have a pleasant voice. Man, I like when he says, let the fingers do the walking, and the scriptures do the talking. But you ain't going to obey what I'm saying. All the scriptures I go around and let the scriptures do the talking, you ain't obeying. You come to service, you ain't obeying. You're sharing the videos, you ain't obeying. You're liking the videos on Facebook, you ain't obeying. You're commenting on the videos on YouTube, you ain't obeying. I'm just a lovely song. I'm just something to entertain you because you're bored on the Sabbath. You're somewhat trying to keep the scripture, so you got to work something. It says, you're a, one that plays a pleasant voice and can, uh, and can play a, uh, on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They hear their words, but they do them not. 
And when this cometh to pass, because when you go to the lake of fire, and lo, it will come, because you will go to the lake of fire disobeying this book. So if you repent, it shall, they shall know that a prophet had been among you. You're going to know a teacher been among you. There's people out there that heard me. There's people that there that heard me, don't have any congregation they go to. Some of you ain't even baptized. Some of you ain't even baptized. And I told you, if I'm the only person the Almighty sent your way to preach truth and preach righteousness, then that's telling you right there the Almighty answered your prayers. That he sent you someone. But because that someone's further than what you want to do, and it means you got to actually be a living sacrifice, like the Bible says, be ye a living sacrifice, and you have to sacrifice your time and your energy and your money to be saved, like the Bible says for you to do, that's too much of a sacrifice. Get ready to burn it like a fire. Because you're going to know in the day of judgment, all you people that, 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 that testified and heard truth through True Hebrews United, the Lord Yeshua, that heard truth, and you decided not to receive it and not to adhere to it, when you go to the lake of fire, you can't say, oh, Almighty, there is no one sent to me. He did send someone to you, and his name was Teacher Simon, but you couldn't hear and obey with his voice. You couldn't hear what the words he was saying that say, repent from this, turn from your ways. There's not happening. One person that says, I try to get in their pocket and try to take their money. Now, one time, we all put pay tithes and offer. We all put in for whatever things we need to do for the edifying of the body, but not one time. I don't even live off the gospel. I work. My own hands minister to my own necessity. I have my own moving company. I'm doing my own thing. I'm a journeyman. Hey, my own hands minister to my own necessity. I don't need to take no money, other man's money. I just want people to repent and do the right thing. So let's keep going. Judges. So this is what happens when these people come. Judges chapter 17. These people come and they choose not to. The Almighty answers their prayer. They say, Almighty, show me the way. Almighty, I want to be saved. So what happens? The Almighty sends them a minister, a minister, and then they don't obey. And so they choose to just do their own thing. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if you choose not to find a congregation. There was someone I know, they're like, Simon, uh, you say you'll help people get out of Babylon, get out of persecution out of the states. And but um, uh, would you still help them? They're not looking for a congregation. I told, I told the person, I said, hey, if they're not looking for the congregation, for any congregation, then their, their, their mindset is in the wrong direction. Their, their priorities is off. How can you be looking at to get out of Babylon because the scripture says get out of Babylon, but all the scripture saying that, hey, you need to have a watchman for your soul. You just override, don't want nothing to do with that scripture, but then you want to just save the flesh? You could save the flesh and still go to the lake of fire. You could leave Babylon and still go to the lake of fire and be insane. The leaving Babylon does not dictate salvation. You have a watchman for your soul that's going to hold you accountable. It's going to teach you the way of righteousness. That dictates your salvation. And I'll show you it in the book. Because you say, oh, I don't need a minister to be saved. We'll see. We'll see what you're saying. How you don't need a minister to be saved. And let's see what the Bible says. Judges chapter 17. Now I'm starting to get born. Judges 17. Oh, I just do my own thing, and you know, I don't. If I have it, I'll just call the brethren. If I have questions, and I'll just watch different ministers on Facebook, but I won't be accountable to anybody of believers. And I'm kind of done with the church scene because my last church was false. He tried to molest the kid, or he did that. Even if you run through a hundred false churches, don't it mean you stop looking for a congregation. Because I, I have to come up here, son. Come up here. Come up here. He he could be searching for a helpmate. And one day he's going to get old and search for a helpmate. And he may run across the first one, which is a gold digger, and another one that's just using them, and another one that just wants to sin with them or just wants to get, uh, just try to play them or going to cheat on them or really have five boyfriends on the side. And he, she, he can run across a lot of wicked girls. But that doesn't mean he just gives up and that, that there's no good girls out there on this planet. And just because you run across five or six false churches doesn't mean there's not a church standing in truth and living in righteousness. Doesn't mean you just stop altogether. How is it naturally just because you have five or six or seven bad relationships before you got married, you didn't stop. But then you get a one or two false churches and now you don't want to look for a congregation. You just gave up. That makes no sense. Go ahead. You good. That makes no sense. You keep pressing. You don't just say, I'm not interested in a congregation. I'm not interested for a watchman for your soul. Because he set these people up to make sure you stay in the way. When he sees you slipping, hey, you, hey, bro, you can't be doing that. Sister, you can't be doing that. Hey, you got to come up higher. Because these people care about your salvation. And when you don't have no one caring about your salvation, hey, this is what happens. I'm going to show you what happens. Judges 17. Judges 17. 
I'm going to start at verse 1. So the Almighty raised up judges. Almighty raised up judges because Joshua and all the elders died. And it says there rose up a generation that knew not the Lord. And as soon as that happened, they had no leadership. They fell into transgression. So Almighty had to raise up judges. So let's see what happened. Judges 17 verse 1. It says, And there was a man on Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from me, about which, about which thou cursed, and spake if also in my ears, behold, the silver is with me. And I took it. And our mother said, Blessed be the Lord, my son. So his son stole money from the mother. And then he came out and confessed and said, Hey, I, I stole the money. And, it says, and she said, Blessed be the Lord. That's a good testimony, right? And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I will wholly dedicate the silver unto the Lord for my hands, for my son, and to make a graven image and a molten image. Uh, now, therefore, I will restore unto thee. So he, she's going to make a graven image unto the Lord. But the first commandment is what? Thou shalt not have any other gods behind me. And then what else? Don't make angels. Don't make any graven image, right? And so she's... Yeah, very good. Don't make any graven images, right? So let's keep going. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took 200 circles of silver and gave them and found and made thereof a graven image of molten gold, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man and the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated unto his sons who became a priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. This is what happens when you don't have a parchment for your soul. You think they they thought they were serving the Almighty by making graven images. Just like these false Christian churches think they're serving the Almighty by celebrating Christmas and doing your hallelujah night on Halloween and doing your false Thanksgiving, which is really worshiping the goddess of harvest, a false pagan religion. They think they're serving the Almighty because they don't have a true teacher. Celebrating Christmas, they don't have a true teacher. And so... This is no different, as far as this is no different than all these church, thousands, probably millions of people celebrating Christmas, thinking they're doing it for the Almighty. No different, because they're practicing idolatry, and they're, pra they're practicing a pagan religion, and this, once again, false gods, graven images, exactly what the Almighty told them not to do. So this is what happens if you do what's right in your own eyes. You don't want a congregation, oh, I just got my Bible, I got my Facebook, I got my YouTube, and if I need to call the brother, I just do this, and I'm just going to do my own thing. I don't need to be a part of a body, even though it causes the body of Christ. And how is it a body of Christ if every single individual is just doing their own thing? That's not really a body, but that's whatever. So I'm going to just do, this is what happens when you do that, just right in your own eyes. When you try to be an island to yourself. Let's keep going. Judges 21. We'll start at verse 25. Judges 21, verse 25. It says, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that was right in his own eyes. And if you see, if you read the book of Judges, every time there was no judge, because Moses and Joshua and the elders died, there was no judge. They fell into transgression. Then he raised up a judge, fell into transgression. Raised up Samson, raised up Gibeon, raised up these judges. They, and as soon as the judge died, they fell into transgression. And this is what happens when you do things that you lean on your own understanding. You do what's right in your own eyes. Perfect example. I know some brothers that don't have watchmen for their soul. They don't have a congregation. Hopefully they're looking for one. Day of Tabernacle came up, they bought a tent. But in Leviticus 23, it's clear as day. One, you need to build it. And two, you need to get sticks and palm trees and willows from the book, uh, willows from the brook, and you need to get goodly trees and you need to decorate that booth that you made. And it's not a tent, it's a booth. But when you're doing what's right in your own eyes, hey, it's going to fall. Because it says, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in what? True. Very good. It says, it says, for God looking for such who to worship. It says, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so their heart is in the right direction because they do go to a sporting goods store and get a tent for the Feast of Tabernacle. But that's not what he said. Because you don't have a watchman. People fasting and they just still eating. Are they still drinking? And it says, no food or water. Are you anoint your head? You know what I'm saying? So people people doing stuff without understanding because you don't have a minister. You could read a text message, but you don't know the spirit behind the text message. Same thing. You can read these scriptures, but if you don't know the spirit behind it, you won't fully have full understanding. 
You read don't work. You read don't work on the Sabbath. These people in the Old Covenant, they didn't work. So when someone was picking up sticks, they were like, well, he wasn't working. He was just picking up sticks for the house. He wasn't working. So they put him in ward because they already had a judgment on the Sabbath. If you work on the Sabbath, you get put to death. So this person picking up sticks, he wasn't working. He was just doing a basic errand like paying a bill or going grocery shopping. So they put him in ward until they knew what to do. Okay, he technically wasn't working. He was just picking up sticks. What do we do? He said, kill him. And so then when we fi find out in Isaiah come in, this is not doing your own pleasure or speaking your own words or doing your own thing. Then we know the spirit behind don't work on the Sabbath. It, is just a, it didn't just account for just work, what you get paid for. All work needs to cease. But you need that prophet to know the spirit behind the law. You have it written, but the spirit behind the law. What does he mean by not work on the Sabbath? So let's keep going. Proverbs 21. And we're going to deal with um, 21. Verse 2. Every man, every, oh, are you ready? Every way of man is right in his own eyes. We just read what happened when they did what was right in his own eyes, right? It says, but the Lord pondereth the heart. He pondereth the heart. He judges that. Proverbs 14 now. Proverbs 14. Because when you be an island to yourself, and when you decide you don't, when you, when you ever you decide to get to a point where you do not want to look for a congregation, at that very second, you outside the will of the Almighty. You should be looking for a congregation, a place to plant yourself. At, hey, you brother out there that's from the UK, hey, you call me out, hey. It don't matter whatever you got to do to make it to a congregation to be saved, you do what you got to do. You got to get a plane ride, you got to do what you got to do. You got to get baptized, you got to do what you got to do. The only person he shows you, I know you live in the UK, and you got to save up money and plane tickets so we can baptize you so we, and you're going to be a part of Jesus United. I'm just using that for an example. You may, there might be some ministers out in the UK. I'm not the only one. There's probably thousands, probably thousands of ministers preaching truth. But if there's no one in the UK and the Almighty sends you teacher Simon, hey, that's where you need to plant yourself. I love you. I hope you, I hope you press. I hope you make it in the kingdom. Get over those strongholds. Keep pressing. Keep trying to repent. Keep trying to do the right thing. But that, it is what it is. If you're praying for a congregation and praying to be saved, and it, the only per, the Almighty sends you someone, and that's the only person you know that's doing the right thing, preaching truth, that's the man of the Almighty, then he asks you your prayer. And if he asks you your prayer, you don't have a right to turn it down. What's up? What's up? Okay, everything good? So, Proverbs 14, verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. It says, there is a way which seemeth right unto the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. Like I said, Christmas. That seemeth right. Oh, we get gifts. It's a good time. We decorate the Christmas tree. We decorate our lives. It's cool. We pray. Uh, you know, we give glory because Christ came down and, you know, he was born and died for our sins. And it seemeth good. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Thanksgiving, we get together and we thank the Almighty for this meal we're going to eat and we give. Yeah, but you're doing paganism. You're, you're practicing with false gods. You're doing idolatry. Same thing as these people. Oh, I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to dedicate this to the Lord. And then you make a graven image, which is against the Lord. These people will say that they're going to do something for the Lord by doing things against the Lord. That's like saying, oh, I'm going to do a Ouija board unto the Lord. It makes no sense. So the origin of the Ouija board comes from witchcraft, so I can't turn that on to the Lord. I'm going to commit, for, I'm going to smoke crack unto the Lord, though. I'm not smoking crack for myself. I'm smoking the crack pipe to the Lord. It makes no sense. So how are you going to celebrate Christmas, which is paganism, celebrate Halloween, celebrate Thanksgiving, which comes from false gods, unto the Lord? No different than what we read in Judges. You're doing what's right in your own eyes. This is what happens we don't have a minister. This is why he says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, and teachers. I'll always push that. Whenever a person wants to be a renegade and refuse to find a congregation and plant themselves, you have some, especially you men, you have some ego, ego issues because you, you don't want to humble yourself enough to be under a minister. It says, submit unto those that watch for your soul. You know, it says, obey them that have rule over you for they watch for your soul. And you just don't want to submit. But you're not a minister. The Almighty didn't make you a minister. 
Whatever talent he gave you, he gave you. Whether you have the interpretation of the dream, whether you prophesy, whether you have gifts and healing, whatever, whether you have administration, whatever talent he gave you and whatever capabilities, it wasn't a minister. So you need to submit yourself to the minister because this is what he set up. He set up ministers. He set up leaders. He set up leadership. He has order. That's like going, I want to be in the military, but I don't want no sorry, I don't want no superiors over me. How much sense that makes? I want to be a private, but I don't want a sergeant, I don't want a sergeant first class, I don't want a CEO, I don't want any captain, I don't want no one over me. I just want to do my own thing. Then you can't be in the military. So how are you going to be in the Lord's army and not have ranks? There's ranks in heaven. There's the archangel. There's ranks in, in the, the, how angels have it. There's ranks in heaven. And then you want to be a part of the body, but you don't want to submit unto a watchman for your soul? That don't make no sense. Now you, that's like you wanting a job, but you don't want to be have a boss over you. You want to you just start your own company, but you don't want to start your own company because in the in the in the way of the Almighty, He didn't raise you up to be a minister. So if you don't have a minister, then you need someone to minister to you. It's just it is what it is. It's black and white. Either you're a minister, you're called to minister the gospel and save souls, or you're not, and you need to find a watchman for your soul. Point blank. Oh, well, I just don't want to make the wrong right choice, and whatever excuse you want to make. The bottom line, if you're honest, the Almighty will send you someone. Wherever state or whatever distance that is, he'll send you someone. And you got to do what it takes to be saved because it got to be a living sacrifice. you got to be a living sacrifice. I'll show you the scripture. We'll keep going, though. I'll hit down there. So it says, there is a way to seem of brightness to the man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. So let's keep going now. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 15. So I might just to be back with the saints and believes. Amen. Don't worry, reinforcements is coming. Reinforcements is coming. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And we'll start at verse 3. Now for a long season Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. Now I'm going to show you this. Now the Almighty has set it up because they was disobeying. He says, I'm going to take, as a punishment, he says, I'm going to take my teachers from you. I'm going to take my teachers from you. And I'm going to take the law from you. Because I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to show you something. Let's keep going. So, that was a punishment. So why would you willingly not want to teach and priest or be without the law? That was a punishment. You'll have to read other scriptures. That was a punishment. He says, hey, it says they're going to travel sea to sea and from land to land to find the word of the Lord, and they ain't going to find it. They'll take his word from you. But I'm going to show you something. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. Let's go to verse 1. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Now in the latter, uh, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now let's check this out. It says, In the latter times, some shall depart from uh, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What? So a lot of people is going to depart from the truth. Speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having the conscience sealed with it. I'm going to read these other ones because I'm going to do a side note. I'm going to come back. So we're going to get back to this conscience, but let's keep going. Forbidden to marry and command to abstain from meats. And this is the scripture they use to justify why you can eat pork, but I'm going to crush this right now. Which God created to be received with thanksgiving, and then which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be received if it received with thanksgiving. You're supposed to pray for your food in the Old Testament and the New Testament, first of all. We've seen that. Old Testament and New Testament, you gave thanks before you eat. We've seen Christ, which is when Christ was alive, it was still Old Testament. When he broke bread, he gave thanks, didn't he? So, but he still didn't eat no pork. So, but we'll get to, let's say, forbidden to marry and abstain from meats. So, for you to say forbidden to marry and abstain from meats, he's saying meats in entirety. And he's saying marriage in entirety. He's not saying you're uh, forbidden to abstain from pork. Forbidden to abstain from shrimp. Forbidden to abstain from a uh, straight lobster. No, he's not even talking. He's saying to be a vegetarian. To say you can't get married. He's saying what the Catholics do, how he says the priests, they can't get married at all. 
That's forbidden to marry in its entirety. And that's forbidden to abstain from meats in its entirety. Christ ain't come and fulfill not eating pork. How, how, does Christ, how does Christ dying for our sins mean that you can eat pork again? Show me. Because it says it was a shadow of things to come. The law was a shadow of things to come. So how is not eating pork going to keep them until the promise came? What in the world does not eat, letting, saying they can't eat pork, and this is to keep them just to Christ come. This is the schoolmaster just to Christ come, and once Christ come, they can eat pork now. You know, good and well, you still can't eat no pork, no lobster. But I, that's in Amos. I'll show you in Amos later on. But back to the main, main thing, verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience sealed with the iron. Truth be told, look at your convictions without a congregation. Why is your conviction so dull? I've seen people leave this congregation, or leave a congregation when I was at Elder Tony Smith and whatnot. They leave, next thing you know, they're not keeping the Sabbath how they used to. Or, you know, their mouth slips up, and this slips. And the things that bother them, and they were strong in their convictions and in righteousness, ah, oh, that don't really bother me. I don't see nothing wrong. I've seen this brother come, we had a conversation, why it's okay for women to wear pants? Why it's okay for women to wear makeup? I said, the Bible says shame faithfulness. I said, makeup glorifies the face. So how can you be shamefacedness at the same time where you're glorifying it with makeup? And it says, oh, well, then some people use that. Some people use that to cover their uh, wrinkles and stuff. So they're trying to glory. They're trying to cover their imperfections. They're trying to glory in their flesh. I was like, there's no way around that. When it says shamefacedness, you can't be wearing makeup and glorifying the flesh like that. It says, and then for the pants, the pants are unmodest. I was like, how is it that you stand so strong in this and because you got kicked out of the church, because that's what happened, he got kicked out of the church, and all of a sudden his sandals got to drop. This is conscious to sear with a high iron. This is the same person I was saying that let his kids break the Sabbath just so he could get custody of his kids. These people leave, these, leave a church in truth and think that they're right, doing what's right in their own eyes. The next thing you know, they drop in the sandals, left and right. Like a whole drops draws, they be dropping sandals all the time. Because their conscience is seared with a hot iron. They don't have this, they don't, they're not strong. They're not built upon the foundation. They don't have no watchmen. They don't have no edification. They don't have no body that when they're feeling down and, and give them words of encouragement, show them love. There's no way around it. If you're not a minister, your convictions are going to just deplete and deplete and deplete. So let's keep going. Matthew chapter 21. We're almost done. Matthew 21. You guys are doing good though. You guys just gonna hold on a little bit. You guys are doing good. Matthew 21. We'll start verse 33. We need to stand out here. Matthew 21, verse 33. Here another parable which a certain household uh, was a certain household which planted the vineyard and hedged it round about and dig the vine and red press in it and built a tower and he led it out to his husbandmen and went into a far country. Check this out. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent a servant to his husbandmen that he might receive the fruits of it. And the husband took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. So these servants were the prophets. He sent prophets. And he sent uh and he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. And last of all, he sent to them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. So that was our Mashiach. That was Christ, right? And when the husband saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir, let us kill him, and let us seize his inheritance. And they caught him, and they cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. And when the Lord therefore that vineyard cometh, what will he do unto the husband? Check this out. They said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render unto him the fruits in their seasons. So this is what's going to happen. Because this parable was about how he sent, he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets. Many of times where I wanted to gather you as a hand gathers her young, but you will forbade them. And he sent a prophet after prophet after prophet, and they killed some and put some in prison, and they put like Jeremiah in the dungeon and whatnot, tried to starve him out. And then finally he, they, he sent himself. God came in the flesh. I'm a Shia king, the son of God came. God manifested in the flesh came, and, they, and you, you destroyed him. You hung him on a tree. You destroyed him. So this parable was a parable by itself, but he always sent prophets. He always sent prophets to the people. 
Now, why would he send prophets to the people if you could just do your own thing, take your Bible and do your own thing? He always sent these people. And what did he say when they didn't want to receive the prophets? He says, what are you going to do? He says, he's going to destroy these people and give it on to someone that will receive it. Because you better, you better believe all those people that didn't receive Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Isaiah or Nehemiah or Ezra or Joshua or Moses, they got destroyed. And the people that did receive these prophets, they made it into the kingdom. So all these people, oh, well, you know, that congregation's too far. Man, he's a man of God, but that's too far. And that, guess what? Don't even worry about it. You're going to get miserably destroyed. And he's going to give it to someone that's worthy, that's, that will receive the prophets, and that will receive the son. So let me show you something. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Mm -hmm. Starting at verse 1. <coughs> And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always praying not to faint. You gotta be praying, sisters, you guys gotta be praying. Children, you guys need to be praying. Always be praying to the Almighty, even before you go to sleep, even if we don't get on you guys need to pray. Build your relationship with the Almighty. Not just because Simon says it or your mom says it, but because you have a relationship with the Almighty. It says, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto me, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest I be continuously uh, con uh, lest by her continuous coming she weary me. And the Lord said, on what, uh, said, Hear what the unjust said, and shall not God avenge his own elect that cry day and night? unto him, though he bear along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth. So, hey, all you people out there that don't have a congregation, be praying. Praying that he'll send you a watchman for your soul. He'll ask you your prayer. If you're honest and you really want to repent from sin and want to do the right thing and be saved, he'll send you someone. He'll send you someone. And he might not be in the same state. Yeah, but that, that watchman is going to love and care for you, your children, your husband, your wife, whoever that wants to do the right thing, they'll be there for you. And the Almighty will send someone to make sure you make it in. Because how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach you unless he be sent? He says he chose the foolishness of preaching to save that which is lost. One more scripture. Or two more. Luke 7. Luke chapter 7. Verse 31. Luke 7. Verse 31. The Lord says, Wherefore then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they? They are like children sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, saying, we have piped unto you, and you have not danced, and you have not, and, and we have mourned, and you have not wept. John the Baptist come neither eating and drinking, eat, neither eating bread or drinking wine, and you said he had the devil. The Son of Man come eating and drinking, and you say, behold, he is a gluttonous man, wine bitter, friend of publicans of, and, of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all our children, and this is mainly what I deal with. You can't please them all. You can't please them all. John the Baptist come, they didn't receive him. The Son of Man come doing the complete opposite, they didn't receive him. They're, they're like, well, man, he preaches truth, but I just don't like how hard he comes. I don't like when he says, man, you going to the lake of fire. I don't like when he, why does he have to come that hard? Why does he have to preach that? Man, I just can't receive it. Man, I, man what he's saying is true, but if that's who the Almighty sent you, you got to receive it. 